a new year and new rejuvenated hope for Manchester United fans who were hoping tonight at Goodison Park that they start the new year right. But the one thing that might worry Manchester United fans a little bit is the fact that in the reverse fixture between these two was one of Manchester United's three losses throughout the entire season and Everton, as you can see, absolutely tearing it up really under Sam Adice, ending up at fifth place, which is way beyond anything Everton have achieved in the last few years and considering the club turmoil since uh, David Moyes left Sam Adice coming into the beginning of the season it is actually quite an impressive stat 17 goals only conceded for Manchester United this season but they also to be conceded by David De Gea and we're talking about him again aren't we um, it's just something just isn't right he's just not saving anything he's been dropped out of the team again today for United on the Everton side of course Jordan Pickford gets the start and he's with Johnson, Michael Keane, Jackie Arca and Gubert in front of him. Midfield is Gahir and uh, Morgan Schneidlin, two former Manchester United players, in fact three if you count Rooney. He's with Salvo and Sigerson in the midfield and uh, Sandro actually gets the start ahead of uh, Nizeze who was one of the substitutes that came on and scored I believe in the reverse fixture. So as we said, Greg Parfit signing Romero in goal yet again. Uh, Hendricks is with Lindelof by and Bertrand in the defence today. It's back to the 4-3-3. Carrick returns after some months out with a heart rhythm problem. Mahis with Mata and McTominay. Up front is Mikatari and Mousades either side of Slatan and Ibrahimovic. Joel Pierre, as we said, making the bench along with Angel Gomez. Manchester United, such a team mentality as well. The chemistry is... It looks through the roof, doesn't it? I don't know why you would even want to think about doing that. Mkhitaryan, once again with an acrobatic shot. And a beautiful bring down here and a beautiful attempt. And Jordan Pickford just short of that one. It would have been a splendid save. It was a blended, uh, splendid attempt all round, as it were. But uh, Jordan Pickford, obviously, probably under the watch of Sam and Ice. In the, uh, not Sam and Ice. Um, Gareth Southgate in the crowd tonight. England squad. A big focus now. We are in World Cup year. This is where, if you want to impress your manager, your uh, country manager, you uh, have the chance here to do it. Obviously, the top appearance record is Ryan Giggs. Aaron Henwood is kind of creeping up on it. He's got time on his side. Uh, to beat that appearance record. It's got a bit of a ways to go though, unfortunately. Still got a, a few years to kind of get it done yet. He is in his 11th season, I think it is now. Great pass. Slatan! He's put it in. 1-0. And no surprise. As Manchester United score again. And it's Slatan Ibrahimovic. Right at the end of the first half. And they are rectifying the loss they suffered. They could really go unbeaten for the rest of the season, Manchester United. It is becoming so easy for them now. I think all the kinks that were probably questions in the early going is starting to be worked out. Greg Parfridge is starting to find his feet and find his kind of team and formation. And even when he rotates it, because Greg Parfridge does rotate a bit. He doesn't really keep the same team more than once. But he's a master at that. He did it in the San Antonio Spurs days and it paid dividends. And it looks like somewhere in his first season, he really is going to win something. Be it the league, be it the FA Cup, be it the Carabao Cup, maybe even everything, maybe even the Champions League. I don't think there's any question of how far Popovich can go. There really is such a buzz around Old Trafford to just see how Greg Pop far Greg Popovich can go. Could he go all the way? He's certainly looking like it. And Slatan has given his team the lead at the end of the first half. Another three points on the ball, perhaps? Only another half to play to find out. Everton nil, United won. Against the great specimen that is Slatan Ibrahimovic when it comes to human being, he's almost evergreen at this point. Rooney cuts into the box. I think it was out for a corner. Out of Lindelof, who. Really is coming to his own. We said in the first half that Lindelof's probably been having an issue or two with conceding penalties, but 
On his day, Victor Lindelof has been sensational. Rooney with the resulting corner. Oh, what a save by Romero. Oh, it's gone in. It's gone in, and I think that's Michael Keane of all people. Michael Keane has gone off celebrating. Oh, my. Of all people, it appears Michael Keane has scored. Let's have a look at this. Rooney whips in the corner. It's a great corner. It's a great strike, and it's a great save by Romero. But unfortunately, he's caught out of position. Michael Keane gets ahead of Lindelof. And it is Michael Keane that has scored it. And what a story for the lad. Manchester United protege at one point. Let go of by Marini, uh, Jose Mourinho. And he gets his first goal of the season against his former club. And wow, that was against the run of play for sure. But Romero, really unfortunate. Uh, because he was uh, caught out of position after a splendid save from a first time strike by, I think it was Nzeze off the corner from Rooney and uh, it's really unfortunate but that's the way it goes in football and uh, Everton has drawn level Manchester United still uh, still on that unbeaten run though they still there but Everton have definitely looked a threat this evening well just to confirm for you that matchup against Brentford in the third round of the FA Cup as Manchester United begin their FA Cup campaign And then they will go on to face Bournemouth in the first leg of the semi-final. The Carabao Cup as the holders look to regain, uh, retain that trophy. And Sadro! Oh, Everton, two quick fire goals. Oh my, and they have come from behind. Sandro, the most unlikely goal scorers on that one. They're having unlikely goal scorers today. Everton have come from behind. Goal. And Romero is having one of his off nights, unfortunately. And look at this. Great movement here by Everton. Oh, pick pock, pa uh, pocket pass by Rudy. Absolutely sensational. And we were just saying in the first half how Rudy has adapted his game to benefit his team. And uh, he benefited for Sandro there. As he got the assist. And uh, Everton now have the lead. It's been a quick turnaround in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Everton have been behind and now in front and uh, Everton just will not go away they've been one of the top six all season long uh, chasing a top four place uh, ahead of, uh, behind Southampton they have a bit of a cushion over them I think Southampton do but right now Manchester United could be doing Everton a bit of a favour uh, Southampton may need to win to keep the pressure on but uh, Everton just one of those teams that will not go away and I think it's a testament to the uh, the kind of uh, style that Sam Allardyce has implanted here. He was uh, he was uh, brought in at the beginning of the season, uh, replacing um, I can't remember who the former manager was, but in any case, Sam Allardyce has uh, hit the ground running with this Everton team, and he's doing a grand job. Oh, look at Nzeze breaking through everything, and uh, Everton just in the ascendancy here. And uh, I think it's Balassi actually. My apologies. Well, that man, he was, he's known for hatching plans to rescue teams from relegation, but he's taking Everton onto the brink of the top four. They're in the Europa League at the moment, and they're winning against Manchester United again. But then there raises a question, what will happen for the rest of the season? Manchester United have been unbeaten against the traditional top six all season long. They'll go on to win anyway. Oh, Slatan! Wonderful! It's the response. And it's Slatan Ibrahimovic again. Off a cross from Marta. Hit first time. Belted in the goal. John Bickford, no chance. And we were talking about how Everton won't lie down. Well, it's the same with Manchester United. Strike effortlessly and emphatic by Slatan Ibrahimovic. And, well, his injury caused him no problems, did he? He's just evergreen and it's just unbelievable how his career is still going. And he could win almost everything in his second year. It was a bit of a struggle to get him back. He ran out his contract uh, last season. Jose uh, spoke with him and re-signed Well, not Jose, but Repavich uh, re-signed him. It was an experience matter. He needed all the experience that he could get. And Slatan was more than happy to help. And uh, he's now paying it back with his fifth goal of the league this season and uh, Slatan is starting to find his feet in England too 
And uh, we always knew that Greg had a knack of um, getting the best out of what he has, and he's certainly done it with this Manchester United team to the point where they're winning the league. They're leading the league. They're in the Champions League still, somewhere where for, uh, people thought Greg would struggle. But he hasn't faced the likes of Real Madrid yet. That's the that's the thing. And just Giant fans are still kind of eager to see what he'll do against the likes of Real Madrid. But honestly, in the top against the top six of the Premier League, Greg hasn't lost yet. Mata! Oh! Well, how about that? One Mata scored. And it's 3-2. Well, we've had coming from behind from both sets. And Mata has been repaid by Slatan for his cross that Slatan scored. It's the exact reverse. Slatan keeps the ball wonderfully there. And then Mata, well, he does the same thing as Slatan did. Same corner. Not the same strike, obviously. But uh, John Pitford's having a bit of a nightmare in this one. And Greg Parfish, look at that, delighted with his team's response. They don't seem to keep their heads down, Manchester United. They keep fighting. And so much of what made Manchester United great in the 90s under Sir Alex Ferguson, maybe even the 2000s to a degree as well, at least till 2013 or so, uh, Greg Parfitch has relit the Manchester United legacy. And uh, it's amazing that we're saying that. It really is about a guy who knew nothing. Uh, he knew what he was managing. He knew who he was managing, and that was about it. The culture change, the difference in style, everything, and Greg Pavlovich has took it all in his stride, and his team has responded magnificently. And I think that's just a testament to Greg's kind of not laid-back style. He does he does have a great mixture of both sides of a manager's kind of you can't really coddle, but you can't be overly critical to the point where you ostracize players and that's what happened to the likes of Bastian Schweinsteiger and uh, Greg Pavlovich saying he was very disappointed with the beret that Mourinho handled that and he actually took a bit of a dig at Jose Mourinho at one point saying what on earth was he thinking letting go of such an experienced hand that could have benefited United in not the really the long term as it were Ashton Schweinsteiger was always a, he wasn't really a long-term option, as it were. As, uh, I'm not sure that actually is coming on, but uh, on the Manchester United side of things, Zachary Deliri is coming on for Michael Carrick. So Deliri, who's really known as a striker, playing where Michael Carrick is. So can Greg Pavlovich do it? Can he pull it off? And win against the two teams he lost against earlier in the season. He can now. Because Kaziz Ardez has put his name on the score sheet. And the game is over. And Greg Pavlovich has done it. He has rectified his two losses in the league earlier this season. Slatan with another tremendous cross. Jordan Pickford unfortunate here. Because he comes flying at it. And he just falls short. Good strike from Zardes. 4-2 and United get the three points. That's Gazzini Zardes' first goal in the league. He's been a, a force in the Cups. Uh, Gazzini Zardes, he scored on both his Carabao Cup appearances earlier in the season. And uh, now he's a uh, league scorer. And it just gets better and better for Greg Pavic. He really, He really could win it all, couldn't he? We're not saying he will, but I think it's a high possibility that he will. If his teams keep playing like this, they've rarely had an off day. And when they've lost, they've played really kind of well as well. The only real bad performance they had was against Benfica. And really, oh, very close to handball against Bailly. I think it came off somebody, because the referee, I think, is signalling goal kick. I thought it was a corner, but uh, we'll take it. The referee is in wouldn't bet against him doing it either. Well, what can you say? The Everton fans aren't happy, but I think it's still justified, to be honest. It's just Manchester United, and what they've done all season long is keep fighting, keep pushing, and Greg Pavlovich is making it work. He really is at this point. And uh, Slatan Ibrahimovic, well, what can you say? He's just, he's just a phenomenal specimen, really, isn't he? 
keeps on going, even when it looks like his career could be over. Two goals for him today, one for Zardes and one for Mata. Michael Keane scored against his former team with Sandro today, but once again, Manchester United defy all the odds and come back to win from being in front, going behind, and then going drawing level, and then going in front again. And uh, they just push on when they need it. And uh, I think... I think the ceiling is very, very high in terms of Greg Pavlovich here. I think we really have to start talking about how far he can take this team. And judging on the evidence of this season alone, I think the ceiling is quite high. And uh, he's looking towards United legacy even in his first season. And uh, if that continues, then the future is definitely bright if it goes into beyond, it's beyond the first season. Uh, that uh, this will really start to tell how great this team can be but on early evidence it looks very clear doesn't it Everton 4 United tip uh, Everton 2 United 4 my apologies well as you can see some results today which really could affect the shape of this title race even at this point of the season uh, we'll start with Brighton and uh, Bournemouth who have grabbed a vital win in their quest to survive uh, with a 2-0 win against them today. Burnley and Liverpool drew with a goal apiece and uh, Leicester City beating Huddersfield by two goals to nil. Now, here comes the real results that matter. Manchester City beating Watford by a goal to nil. Uh, Southampton losing to Palace by two goals to one. And the other big result goes to Swansea, who have beaten Spurs by a goal to nil. And that means Manchester United's lead probably has been increased to about nine points. And they're just running away with it. Finally, in the West derby, it's West Ham beating West Brom by two goals to nil. Let's have a look at the table. Manchester United up on top by nine points with 22 played. It's still some time for the others to catch up. And Manchester United could fall and they could stutter. But I don't really see it happening. Manchester United and a great part of which have been sensational. And their lead reflects it. Watford with a further point back. And a nice cushion for Manchester United fans to settle on in the league. Going into the next two games which are cup competitions. Incidentally Chelsea. Uh, the champions have recovered over the last few games. And they're finally back into the top four, but a long, long way off Manchester United. And it's safe to say that, well, they may not win the title this season. They're a long way away. They're, they're a long way away from even Watford, uh, which is testament to Watford and Spurs' season. Uh, as they've reached 40 points. Chelsea have only reached 34. Southampton drop out on goal difference to the top four. Manchester City a further point back. So it's going to be a real fight for fourth place with Manchester United, Spurs and Watford. Seemingly, at the moment, the only ones to challenge for the league title. Leicester City in 7th with Stoke 8th, Liverpool 9th. Uh, Everton dropped to 10th with their loss today. Arsenal just outside the top 10. Now they go up into 11th place. West Ham 12th with Brighton in 13th place. Huddersfield, the other promoted side, in 15th there. Separated by Swansea City. Crystal Palace, I believe, have gone out of the relegation zone a while back. West Brom are uh, just on the bubble. A point clear of Burnley and Newcastle United. We're still down there. Bournemouth are gating, uh, but will it be enough? Uh, there is more than enough time for Bournemouth to make a late surge towards safety. Eddie Howe could be on for a great escape, and one can only hope, because Eddie Howe definitely is one of the up-and-coming managers in the league. And it looks like he could be proving why. It's still ways to go, but it can be done. Let's hope so. The FA Cup where the amazing usually happens. And we are here for Brentford taking on Manchester United this evening under a lot of fog. Uh, it is, we are going to have very tricky playing conditions today because the fog has arrived here at Brentford. It's not going to be an easy task for Manchester United to navigate this because the cup minnows always have something to play for against these big clubs and these miracles usually happen. And Greg Parfridge knows that and his squad reflects a real need to get this one done. He's taking no chances today. And uh, that's a man we're going to have to watch out for just to score. And he'll make it look easy, I'm sure. And he's partnered up with Marcus Rashford up front today. There has been a transfer brewing as uh, rumours of Marilyn Fellaini being signed with Real Sociedad. 
on a pre-contract agreement uh, is the news coming out of Old Trafford today. Um, it is quite an interesting story. Marilyn Fellaini was uh, not criticised, but he's not been a player to kind of set the world alight in many f Manchester United fans' eyes. Greg Pavlovich has probably been a little critical of him after the Everton game where he gave away a penalty, but he's played a lot since, but he doesn't make the team today because Greg Pavlovich is taking this one seriously. I think he's giving Brentford the respect they deserve. They do deserve to be here, of course. Uh, Daniel Bentley will play in goal. Ali Wilkins is up front. Uh, and he's with Woods, Makoto and Bashioko as well. Henri is up there on the right back position with Desigard, Egan and Belland as well in the uh, defence. Manchester United, full strength squad, taking no chances. David De Gea is in goal. And he's with Rojo Jones and Eric Bly. And the Magic Matic is with Herrera today. Gomez is the only real surprising inclusion uh, in the midfield with Zaha, Herrera, Matic and Lingard, Martial and Rashford. As we said, the two men up front, the deadly strike force. De Greg Pavlovich wants goals. He wants to get this one done. And he's putting his two trusted goal scorers up there to get the goals he needs to navigate this. Because Brentford will come out playing. They're the minnows. They're the ones with nothing to lose. And Greg Pavlovich knows that. And he's given them the respect they deserve. And in a matchup like this, you would normally expect the likes of Manchester United and Arsenal uh, to play weakened teams, as it were. The only problem with this is that Manchester United will face Bournemouth next in the Carroll Cup. So uh, he'll have to hope that he can navigate this without injury to one of his top players. But he knows what this means. The FA Cup is the one prestigious thing in the English game, it's the most prestigious competition in my opinion uh, and the one everyone should win and have on their CV somewhere and Greg Pavlovich wants that FA Cup win on his CV, that's no doubt about it and he's trusting his players to do the job today and um, obviously he played a couple of youngsters up against uh, Everton with McTominay and such uh, but uh, he's taking this seriously and it's a credit to him really but Greg Pavlovich, we know he's the master of rotating his squad and his players and getting the best out of them when he needs it. And I think there'll be no doubt that over the next couple of fixtures uh, that will become apparent. Um, like we said though, the FA Cup is, uh, the Carabao Cup is two legs. Score coming in from Swansea. Uh, Pabon has scored for them. Uh, so Swansea heard against Berry, I think that was. They're going to be in for a long afternoon because Marcus Rashford is scoring for fun. Aston Villa and goal and uh, for them and joy for Merz YT13. Abdoma has scored against for them against Norwich City. So Merz YT13 is immediately jumping in his seat, I'm sure, of that result. Well, what a story this is. Gareth Bale to Chelsea. Ha! Huh. That's a very interesting one. I'm uh, that's the first I've heard of that. And boy. Gareth Bale, heavily linked with Manchester United throughout the years, due to impossible rumours, I would call them. Uh, that doesn't seem likely. I, I don't think Gareth Bale would uh, go back to Chelsea. I, uh, you know, why would you want to leave Real Madrid, I guess, if you want a new challenge? And Gareth Bale, I think, has unfinished business at Real Madrid. Barnsley have taken the lead against Southampton. A big scout going, perhaps. Bradshaw has scored for Barnsley, and they have the lead at home against Premier League Southampton. And already, the amazing is happening. This is a great tackle uh, from earlier in the day uh, on Marcus Rashford. You need to do that, and you need to get the ball cleanly as well. And he did both. Great challenge to stop uh, the almost impossible to stop Marcus Rashford on that one. And another score coming in. It's at the Etihad Stadium. Manchester City had the early lead, but Sheffield Wednesday have equalised. And it's all happening here in this opening 15 minutes elsewhere, more than here. But, um, wow, Sheffield Wednesday, what a coup there. And already we're getting some incredible results coming through on our screen. There's Wilfred Saha. He's going to have a real hard time to keep up with him for the afternoon. Here's Ender Herrera. He's uh, come off Martial. Martial holds up the ball brilliantly off the post. Anthony Martial, absolutely sensational shot off the post. And Manchester United whisk it for taking the lead. Like we said, Greg Parkovich taking no chances today. He knows how important this competition is. He's given Brentford the respect they deserve, given Man Brentford their best. 
and Liverpool, well, they're giving Hull City their best, aren't they? Saudio Main has scored again uh, for Liverpool, and uh, he's given them a 2-0 lead, and uh, they are um, in command at Anfield. And he's... That's cool, cool, and uh, a great tackle. The Brentford manager was uh, very, uh, very uh, respectful of Greg Pravich in his press conference this morning. He said, looked at the team sheet, and uh, Greg Pravich, I love a man that has barely come in and started taking his cup duties seriously. He's serious about this job. It's a great save for the keeper from Marcus Rashford. And uh, he was very, very, uh, very admired by Greg Pravich. as has the whole football world been, really. He's... It's quite an amazing story what he's done at Manchester United and I think no matter what happens in the future as Everton take a 2-0 lead against Doncaster, former Manchester United man Morgan Schneidlin has gone on the score sheet there against Doncaster Rovers. Here's Malito for Brentford. And he said, well, no one expects us to really do anything but Greg Clark, which knows that never take chances and he's playing as strong as possible when he can. I think that's just a testament to the way he rotates things in his squads often. Could he be sacrificing the Cabo Cup for it, though? And I think Manchester United fans would take that. Considering the season they've had and the turbulent times they've had, they would take anything that looks positive. And I think Grove Parkridge has been a positive influence on this whole team uh, to a point where no one really wants to leave. They're all playing for and crawling have taken the lead against Notts County. 1-0 uh, there for Crawley at the moment. Great over the top ball from Martial. And advantage is gained for Brentford. Great tackle by Angel Gomez. He doesn't keep the ball, unfortunately. And the hair just getting in front of that one. Good chasing down by uh, Koloku, and he's dispossessed Jones. And he's found Vibby. He's onside. It's wide open. Goal for Brentford. Goal for Brentford. Oh my word. It was great. Great movement there by the Brentford players. Phil Jones caught out. And Kurisic didn't give it up. And Phil Jones is probably the first blip he's had all season. He's been phenomenal. Oh, it was a missed tackle by Bai. That's unfortunate. Instead of shooting it straight at David De Gea, the assist was perfect. David De Gea caught out of position and caught cold by that pass. It was sensational. Sensational stuff by Brentford. And Greg Parfit is behind. We all know how he has the comeback factor at Old Trafford back again. Ollie Watkins has given Brentford the lead. The FA Cup, like I said, where the incredible happens to nick an NBA term for a minute there. And uh, wow. Just wow. Shocks here at Brentford. They have the lead. Manchester United, who have barely had a sniff, to be completely honest. Um, well, they had a couple of shots from Angel Gomez, but the pass was just incredibly well done by uh, the Brentford teammate down there. Great goal from Watkins as well. And we know that Manchester United can kick into that higher gear. Cardiff, absolutely demolition job in the first half against Chesterfield. They're 3-0 up now, Cardiff. And uh, look to be progressing, pretty much. Uh, there is still another half to play at the Cardiff City Stadium, though. Here's Gomez. Martial is going to be onside, and he's been beaten to the ball. It's incredible. The Brentford players playing for their, for their uh, purpose here, as it were. Martial. Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford, they left him open. Oh, he's done it again. He has done it again. It is Marcus Rashford yet again. It is no surprise the Brentford players really just left him all the time and space to shoot. The result was inevitable. You can't do that against Marcus Rashford. Uh, and, well, look at this. Just, just, they just lay off him. You can't do that. Brentford just laying off Marcus Rashford, which you just absolutely do not do. Uh, when Marcus Rashford is having the season he is, he's already got 11 goals for the league. Probably a couple of goals in the Champions League and the Carabao Cup. And now he's opened his FA Cup account. <laughs> he just keeps on scoring. And that is exactly why Greg Parkridge started him this afternoon. Uh, for that very reason, Martha and Rashford, by kind of some margin, are Manchester United's top goal scorers this season. 
And uh, they, well, one of them has added to their tally this afternoon as the end of the first half approaches. And Brentford have to do it all again. But credit to them because they are giving Manchester United a game here. And Greg is giving him their best. And uh, I think that's just a testament to him, really, and the respect he has for this competition. It's a, it's a game, like I said, that you would expect the, small, uh, the bigger teams to put out weaker sides. And uh, Gomez has gone down. It's not the hugest loss in the world if Gomez does go off. But let's see what happens. And the Herrera. Marcus Rashford is making a run and uh, Herrera has seen him. And Marcus Rashford pulls it towards the walls. Angel Gomez! He scored! Of all people, Angel Gomez was on the floor a couple of seconds ago. He's right at the other end of the pitch. He's ran it off. He's literally ran it off. And he says to Greg, no, I'm not being subbed. Look at this. <laughs> and how Gomez is an FA Cup scorer. This kid's getting better and better as well. And the comeback factor once again in effect at Manchester United. But what is with the city of goals? You could see goals every game but score more. <laughs> it's like uh, Clive Tilsley used to say though. Will Manchester United score? They always score. And they always score again today. They've already got two in a matter of minutes from two of their young future stars in Angel Gomez and Marcus Rashford. And Brentford, all their hard work, sadly, has been undone so far. And uh, Angel Gomez was on the deck, uh, feeling his leg out a little bit there. But uh, he got straight back up, ran down the other end of the pitch and scored his first heavy cup goal of his career. But Brentford aren't out of this, not by a long chalk. But United are ahead. Brentford 1, United 2, but we still have a second half football to play yet. But he clearly didn't need to because he went and scored just a couple of seconds after going down and being a bit uh, being a bit slow to get to his feet. And uh, here come United already with Rashford. He's on side. It's 3-1. Absolutely no surprise. And uh, Marcus Rashford has done it again, hasn't he? 3-1. And uh, like we said, if Rashford gets on this sort of form, it's going to be a long afternoon. Martial, wicked cross. Unfortunate for the Brentford defender. He went for it, didn't he? But it ended up with Rashford, and he does not miss. He does not miss. And uh, Greg Pravich, he said he was taking this seriously. And I think that's why, because he was worried about conceding a goal today, because it always seems to happen with United. But when you've got Marcus Rashford and Anthony Martial on your team, it's almost impossible to count them out of scoring. And uh, Brentford 1, United 3. And uh, if we're not careful, we could be looking at a lot more goals from the away side of things uh, as this match goes on. This is a surprise. Double substitution from Greg Popovich. And Rashford and Martial are going off for Slatan and Romelu Lukaku. Now, I'm guessing that Greg Parfridge is taking them off immediately with the game more or less wrapped up and he's saving Rashford and Martial for the Carabao Cup semi-final. That's a smart move by Greg Parfridge, a very smart move. You see, it's early to make a substitutions like that, but he's kept one back uh, just in case of injury to Gomez or something. But a uh, very clever move by Greg Parfridge to take his two top goal scorers off and save them for the Carabao Cup semi-final. It's just a, a testament to Greg Popovich's master class stroke of well, almost anything. Uh, Cardiff, 4-0 against Chesterfield. It's all over at the Cardiff City Stadium. That's for definite sure in terms of a contest uh, on the scoreboard, anyway. And Murphy has uh, gone down. And the extra pass probably wasn't needed. Gomez, brilliant turns. They're catching Brentford unawares with their quick movement. Manchester United now. Is Slatan going to beat their man? He's managed the ball. Yes, he is. Oh, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Slatan Ibrahimovic has put this game all beyond doubt now. And it was a great pass from Gomez in the first place. It took a deflection, unfortunately. Oh, that's so unfortunate for Brentford. The ball took a deflection from Gomez's pass. Uh, but Slatan, he doesn't miss, does he? And uh, the tie is all beyond doubt. What a masterclass by Greg Pavlovich today. He's uh, had it all to do. And he's done it brilliantly. He went behind again, his team. 
Uh, but uh, all these players just don't give up on their causes for this one. And uh, Manchester United home and dry against Brentford. And still have, we'll have probably something in reserve for the Carabao Cup semi-final coming next in the first leg. And this tie is all beyond doubt in terms of a contest on the scoreboard here as well. Just like a Cardiff, pretty much. Kind of just being uh, Brentford's best player by far. Murphy. And Kolotsky scored. Ten minutes to go. And he has been their best player by far this afternoon for Brentford. There is a slice of hope perhaps. Still ten minutes to play. And their best player has scored this afternoon. David De Gea rather in sixes and sevens there to be honest. The question is, where is the great defence gone? Uh, this season, they one of the. They're not known for, he's not known for parking the bus, is he, Greg Parvich? He's not known for that at all. He's all out to attack. And it does leave them open to defence. It's been exploited a lot this season. Uh, but they always score more. And that is all that matters at the end of the day. Similarly, since the second half of the season, it's been a more attacking side than Manchester United. They kill games off early. Uh, they make it all over in terms of a contest. Here comes Lukaku. In off the post. It's the response. They're not letting Brentford breathe, are they? And it's Romelu Lukaku again. He's been worthy of a goal this afternoon, to be honest. It's 5-2 to Manchester United. And uh, yes, it may have been over a while ago, but I think that's just sealed it now. The legs, they're just not, they're just not great on their feet, the Brentford players. It's... Uh, it's very slow defensively, and Manchester United's pace is exploiting that, and I think that's been a thing for Manchester United this season. It's what Greg Parfitch kind of said at the start of the season. It's the youngster and the pace of it that we're going to kind of damage teams with, and uh, that's certainly proven the case today. Lukaku does have abundance of it, despite his bigger size in comparison to Angel Gomez, who is nicknamed the midget by teammate Aaron Henwood, but... Uh, it's obviously in the nicest possible way because Gomez is a sensational player for the future, most definitely. And, uh, well, it's all over as a contest on the scoreboard in Brentford 2. Manchester United, a magnificent 5. Here comes Jones off. Uh, another piece of great defending with his interception there. He's rec he recovered almost immediately and scored. Sensational performance by Manchester United. As we probably expected, but every credit to Brentford go goes to Brentford this afternoon. But Greg Parvich, absolute masterstroke, uh, taking off his two best scorers early in the second half. And Manchester United did concede one more goal, but they also scored more and made it 5-2 overall with Lukaku getting a goal. And still have plenty in reserve for the uh, Carabao Cup semi-final first leg. In just a testament to Greg Parvich's genius. Uh, Brentford with every sort of fight here today, but... Manchester United, just the team they've been, it's just too strong for even for league minnows like Brentford. But they definitely put up some sort of, uh, they definitely put up a fight this afternoon, my apologies. But Manchester United are just too strong, even for even for the top six of the Premier League, they've been too strong. So Brentford gave them a game, but United are just too good. Brentford two, Manchester United five. A lot of scores to get through in this first FA Cup round, especially with the Premier League sides. Let's get to it. Barnsley did hold on against Southampton to win by a goal to nil. We've lost a Premier League side already, thanks to Barnsley. Blackpool losing to the Milton Keynes Dons uh, by two goals to one. Obviously, Manchester United thumping Brentford by five goals to two. Brighton, no Premier League scout there today. They beat Milton by two goals to nil. Burnley, what, two? Petersburg, Pe Petersburg? Peterborough won. My apologies, and no Premier League scout for Burnley either. Cardiff City 5, Chesterfield 0. And we're going to have a replay somewhere because Carlisle United and Plymouth Argyle, Aaron Hemwood's former team incidentally, uh, drew 2-2 today. So there'll be a replay at the Plymouth Stadium. Unfortunately, they don't have Aaron Hemwood anymore to win the match for them. Chelsea 2, Chan Athletic 0. Palace 0, West Brom 0. So there'll be a replay at the Hawthorns. Derby County lose to Reading. And uh, I think that was a championship match anyway. So I think it probably would have been relatively normal. Everton 4, Doncaster Rovers 0. 
Yes, I did rate that right. I thought NK Dons was like right next to him. That's funny. Fulham leading Grisby Town by two goals to one. Jellingham losing to Oxford United by a goal to nil. Huddersfield uh, beating Burning Album by three goals to one in the end. Liverpool thumping Hull City by five goals to nil. Manchester City obviously came back against Sheffield Wednesday and turned it around. Middlesbrough to nil. Watford two. So no Premier League scalp there for Middlesbrough, unfortunately. Millwall and Arsenal. Drew 1-0, and that means it'll go to a playoff, uh, playoff, a replay at the Emirates, my apologies, so, uh, Mill will get a well-earned replay there. Newcastle United 2, Sheffield United 1, so no replay, uh, scalp there today for Sheffield United. Northampton 0, Coventry City 1, Norwich 0, Aston Villa 1, so, most YT teams, uh, home team, kind of Aston Villa progress through. Nottingham Forest 1, Wolves 1, that'll go to a replay for Wolves. Not County 2, Crawley Town 1, Southern United 1, Fleetwood Town 2, so that's a great result for Fleetwood, uh, being a lower league side than South End, I think. Spurs 2, Leeds United 0, no real surprise there. Stoke City 1, Ipswich Town 0, Sunderland 1, Forest Green 0, Swansea 4, Bury 1, and finally, West Ham 0. QPR, West Ham 2, QPR 0.